Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And this study is a study on the book of Revelation. John has a vision, and it's his revelation, right, from God about the end times, the end of the world, uh, the last days, Armageddon, uh, the afterlife, right? And so uh, we've been going through the book slowly, a little piece here, a little piece there. And uh, Revelation only has 21 chapters, right? 21 chapters, and here we are in chapter 18. And if you've been with us uh, the entire time, congratulations, right? Who, who'd have thunk <laughs> that you'd be already in chapter 18 and uh, heading towards the finish line? But if you're studying a passage in Revelation 18, you're more than welcome to join us right here, or uh, you can go back and start the series from the beginning. We're picking up in verse 9, and we're talking about the fall of Babylon. Babylon, of course, throughout Revelation is the sinful city. It's the city that uh, pretty much all the bad stuff happens in. And we're not really sure uh, if this is a modern contemporary city now, or if it's a country, or if it's a particular part of the world. Uh, there's people that have their ideas about where Babylon is, or, or who they're talking about. But Revelation talks about it being a place that's wicked and full of sin, uh, similar to the Babylon of the Old Testament, uh, the city that tried to make a tower that would reach to God. Uh, Babylon is always described in the Old Testament as being the enemy of God. And so here we have the great Babylon, the fall of Babylon, and uh, it's in the future. John sees this city that's corrupt with a false religion and a city that is pursuing wealth and materialism that only cares about possessions. And, and so we're seeing God destroy it here at the end. Verse 9 says, And the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her, the city, will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, your great city, your mighty city, Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. So these would be the rulers of the city, right? All the city officials, your mayors, your governors, your presidents, your kings, whatever. Uh, they see their precious city, the, the riches of the city, and they're so sad, right? They're so sad, this great city. And then you think about a city like this, it would be a city that people visited, maybe a, a city where uh, people went on vacation, right? It's a vacation destination. People, you know, take selfies in the city. And they're, oh, I'm at the famous restaurant or I'm at this famous monument. So it's, it's popular, right? And God destroys it in a single hour. Verse 11 says, And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her, since no one buys their cargo anymore. So, so no more pants. That was, a, that was a joke. Verse 12, Cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, all kinds of scented wood, all kinds of articles of ivory, all kinds of articles of costly wood, bronze, iron, marble, cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots and slaves, that is, even human souls. So even the shop owners, so the, you know, the, the, church, the city leaders, they're mourning. And now we have the shop owners, the merchants, the corporations, you know, big, big corporations. They're, they're mourning this great city that we're used to buy and sell and trade in. It's, it's power, it's influence. It's gone. Verse 14, the fruit for which your soul longed has gone for you and all your delicacies and your splendors are lost to you, never to be found again. The merchants of these wares who gained wealth from her will stand far off in fear of her torment, weeping and mourning aloud. Alas, alas, for the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, adorned with gold and jewels and with pearls, for in a single hour all this wealth has been laid waste. And all the shipmasters and seafaring men and sailors and those whose trade is on sea stood far off and cried out as they saw the smoke of her burning, what city was like this great city. So everyone... Everyone sees it and everyone says it. I mean, it even talks about people in boats seeing it burning in the distance, people in other countries watching it on TV and in the news, all mourning and saying, oh my goodness, this great place, this wonderful place that we all loved is gone. And when you read all the things that they're agonizing over, it's all stuff. 
Nobody says, oh no, the people. Right? Think of the women and children. Nobody's saying that. They're, they're saying, look at all the stuff. All the stuff that we liked. All the stuff that we loved. All the stuff that we took pictures of and held when we went on vacation. All the stuff is gone. When you see people on TV and they're crying about a hurricane or a flood or a typhoon or an earthquake, what are they crying about? Loss of life or loss of stuff? Usually it's stuff, right? My house, my car, our place of business, my, my business, my work. It's our stuff. Our stuff is gone. And we agonize about our stuff. Before you go to sleep at night, how, how much of your agony and worry is about stuff? How are you going to pay your bills? How are you going to fix the car? How are you going to fix that hole in the ceiling? Right? We, we think about our stuff. We worry about our stuff. We try to hold on to our stuff. And God says, one day I'm going to take your stuff. I mean, here we are at the end of the world. The world. Right? Revelation 18, you're almost at the end. This is the end of the world. And what are people crying about? Stuff. Their stuff is gone. Verse 19 says, And they threw dust on their heads as they wept and mourned, crying out, Alas, alas! For the great city where all who had ships in the sea grew rich by her wealth, for in a single hour she's been laid waste. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, So will Babylon, the great city, be thrown down with violence, and will be found no more. And the sound of harpists and musicians or flute players and trumpeteers will be heard in you no more. And a craftsman of any craft will be found in you no more. And the sound of the mill will be heard in you no more. And the light of a lamp will shine in you no more. And the voice of a bridegroom and a bride will be heard in you no more. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth, and all nations were deceived by your sorcery. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all who have been slain on the earth. God says, complete destruction. You hurt me, I hurt you back. Right? Right there at the end, God says, you took my people. The blood of the saints and the prophets are on you. And, and so, so, you know, you killed my people, I kill you. And, it's, and, they're, and they're gone. It's all gone. People that would think that their wealth saves them, that their material possessions save them, that their, their security and possessions. God says, I'm going to wipe you out and there's not going to be anything left. God says, it'll be quiet. You hear all those references to herd no more? Can you imagine? pulling into a big city where you live. Just picture that big city where you live with the tall skyscrapers, right? Every city has one. Think about it being gone. Like, gone, gone. Like you just pull over the hill and look off in the distance and you expect to see that familiar uh, landscape. Every building, gone. Every street, every road, gone. And, and no noise. No animals. No plants, no people, quiet, deathly quiet. God says, I'm just going to scoop it up and it's going to be gone. And verse 20 says, Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. What does that mean? It means heaven rejoices. The world's mourning, right? Everyone's crying and saying, oh, the city's gone. But heaven rejoices. Heaven's triumphant. You know, we worry about the decline of Christianity in this world, and we worry about just the, the decline of morality, of goodness, of wholesomeness, decency, truth. God promises one day it's going to go away. God promises the world will win, right? Revelation, God promises. It, we, you can do your best to fight against it, but God says it's inevitable. We worry about our Christian values. We worry about uh, Christian morality or even just human morality. We worry about truth fading. God promises that greed, materialism, all those human lusts are going to grow stronger. And God's influence amongst people is going to diminish. It's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Christians will be persecuted, killed, martyred. 
we saw in Revelation that the altar cried out, right? The altar in heaven cried out with a voice that said, when will we be avenged? Those were the martyrs, the people that were killed, the Christians. And there's going to come a day when people are going to mourn over stuff more than the loss of life. People will happily watch Christians die and they'll mourn and cry more when their stuff is burned. The world will be unbalanced, completely unbalanced, until God destroys it in the end. And that's when heaven rejoices. Heaven rejoices when the great city is destroyed. What does that say about my priorities? Where, where are my priorities now? Are, are, they, are they on more Christians and better Christians? Or is it on stuff? I mean, what would make you happier? Receiving a big check in the mail or finding out your brother became a Christian? What would make you more happy? If your boss gave you a raise or if your boss told you that he became a Christian, what would cause more rejoicing in you? You can't take it with you. God promises one day it's all going to burn. So, how backwards are my priorities? Heaven's worshiping, praising God when this great city is destroyed. Like, finally, right? Finally, it's gone. I've got to seriously tweak the things that bring me joy and the things that I pursue. I need to ask the hard questions about what really matters in life, right? What are the things that heaven rejoices over compared to the things that I rejoice over? And shouldn't I be trying to find more ways to rejoice like heaven? Rejoice in the things that make heaven rejoice. Definitely. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.